My name is Joyce Lowe. I am a counsellor and art therapist with Brahm Center. Okay, and today I'll be talking on using art for self-therapy. Uh, I hope all of you can see my slides properly and hear me clearly. Okay, so before we begin um, and before we commence this talk proper, I'd like to invite um, all of us, if you have uh, any handy materials with you, whether it's paper, pen, markers, highlighters, um, I'd like to just invite you to try to make visual notes um, of this talk as we go along and see whether you're able to um, externalize or put into some visual forms, whatever thoughts, whatever uh, impressions or feelings, ideas that arises as we go along in this talk, right? So this would be a um, first introduction and an exploration especially for those of you who are new to this area of creative self-expression, um, to just try your hand at uh, visual and creative self-expression since we're talking about using art um, as self-therapy. I see some people have raised their hands. Uh, just give me a minute and let me see whether there's any problem. <laughs> Oops. Um, for those who have raised your hands, uh, well, since would you like? Okay, so sorry about that for the interruption. So, Javette, my colleague, will attend to those of you who might be experiencing some technical difficulties, but I will proceed um, with my talk for the rest of us, right? And so I was uh, about to invite all of us to just, you know, if you can get hold of paper, notepad or whatever, to just try your hand at making uh, visual notes as we go along um, to, to try to just externalize, right? Your feelings, your emotions, ideas, or whatever that comes to mind. Of course, if you feel comfortable using words, writing down, that's fine too. But if you feel you want to explore um, more creative expressions, that's fine too. So that at the end of our talk, you would have something, uh, an artwork or an art piece in your hand to actually uh, encapsulate your experience for this past one and a half hours or so. Okay, so using art as self-therapy. So the famous um, psychoanalyst Carl Jung said, your visions will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakes? Now, Carl Jung also um, advocated the use of metaphors, symbols, and imagery in order to, for us to understand ourselves, to deepen our self-awareness. And as you will see in the coming slides, the role of... Um, metaphors, symbol, and imagery, uh, they actually play a very central role in when we talk about using art for our own self-therapy. So in this realm of art as self-therapy, it's very much about an inward turn, being able to look inside in order to gain insights and understand ourselves better. Right, so for a topic like using art as self-therapy, of course, we would need to look at the definition of art. Now, according to Oxford Languages, which is the dictionary that Google uses, art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Now, I have also included the definition of art by Wikipedia, and I like to emphasize this part of uh, Wikipedia's definition. It says, there is no generally agreed definition of what constitutes art, and ideas have changed over time. So essentially, art 
can be the more, um, we can understand art to be the more conventional forms like paintings, uh, sculptures, 3D um, installations, even photographs. Um, however, I like to submit, especially when we're talking about using art for our own self-therapy, that um, we can actually broaden our understanding, our idea and the definition of art to something that is wider and more expensive. It can go beyond just uh, art that is appreciated visually, i.e. the visual arts like drawing, painting, so on and so forth, to include also other forms of creative um, self-expressions. The important thing is these um, expressions, these creative self-expressions are coming from a place that is authentic and true, right? So the picture that you see here on your right of say, it looks like a cow. It, um, some would say that, is this really art or is this more like craft? Because it looks like embroidery. Now, the important thing is not so much um, what kind of labels or categories or definitions um, that we, we need to be concerned about, but it's really um, what is the therapeutic value in the process of art making, all right? So, so next we're going to look at the definition of self-therapy as opposed to art therapy. Now, we're, today we're talking about using art as self-therapy. So what is self-therapy? Self-therapy is uh, often used interchangeably with the term self-help therapy or even self-counseling. It is essentially therapy, especially um, psychotherapy that we apply to ourselves, right? So it's, maybe it's almost like a form of uh, self-talk as it were. That's why it's also called self-counseling. Now, self-therapy is different um, from art therapy and using art for our self-therapy is different from seeing an art therapist for art therapy, right? Now, in art therapy, we are talking about um, therapy that is provided by a professional called the art therapist. And this art therapist is uh, usually an, an individual who's trained at the master's level in areas relating to human development, psychology, counseling, psychodynamic psychotherapy, and artistic techniques, right? So in, when, when you say that you are receiving art therapy, um, you are actually seeing an art therapist who will facilitate those sessions. Whereas when we talk about using art as self-therapy, it's basically us working on ourselves and we are uh, conducting the, the therapy on ourselves, all right? So this list here is the, a list of the um, potential benefits of self-therapy, but this list is by no means an exhaustive list. So some of the things that um, we can gain from self-therapy is an increased uh, self-awareness, uh, ability to undertake and understand other perspectives, to identify self-defeating patterns of thoughts, to, um, to lower stress levels and re reactivity, um, Self-therapy also can help us to heal emotional wounds and address fears while attaining um, stability and calmness. It can help us to enhance creativity and increases concentration and focus, helps us to get unstuck uh, from whatever difficulties that we may be experiencing. Uh, it helps to improve our interpersonal relationships, correct um, self-destructive behaviors, restore hope and optimism, and so on and so forth, all right? This is just a, 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 a sampling, a sampler of what are some benefits of self-therapy. Now, if you do some reading up and, uh, you know, of references on um, self-therapy, you will see that there are usually some um, guidelines or recommended uh, methodology or steps in how one can approach uh, 
um, self-therapy. So usually it starts with a issue or problem identification, right? You identify what is it that's giving you difficulty at the point in time, and then you just you identify and you decide on the goal or the outcome that you want to set for yourself from the self-therapy. Thereafter, and this is the part that um, probably requires the, the most time, would be the exploration and understanding of the thoughts, behaviors, uh, values or beliefs that are perpetuating the difficulties or the issue at hand. And then challenging or replacing these uh, maladaptive thoughts, and beliefs, and behaviors, or coming to a place of acceptance. Thereafter, it usually uh, one usually concludes the self therapy with um, probably some meaning making, or even uh, putting in place uh, measures to maintain the uh, positive changes or the positive shifts. Right now. In addition, certain frameworks uh, have been uh, recommended in self-therapy. These frameworks uh, include cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, mindfulness, um, ACT, which stands for acceptance commitment therapy, uh, and IFS, which stands for internal family systems. Now, these are just some um, therapy frameworks that one can apply um, in one's self-therapy and they all work together in order to address um, the spiritual, emotional, mental and physical parts of ourselves which are experiencing pain or difficulty. Now I would like to submit that when one uses art for self-therapy not only are we, um, can we use these uh, recommended uh, guidelines or steps or approaches, but when we use art as self-therapy, the art making process itself provides a, um, a different dimension and a different perspective to the whole idea of self-therapy. It, it will still be able to help us address um, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical parts of ourselves that, uh, that is experiencing pain, right? But um, art as self-therapy actually gives a different perspective, a different dimension to this whole approach. Now, this is just, again, a non-exhaustive list of some uh, conditions which uh, can benefit from uh, using art as self-therapy. And this one um, is almost like a matching of the earlier um, slide uh, where we looked at the benefits of um, self-therapy, right? So certain conditions that can benefit from uh, self-therapy would be uh, depression, anxiety, persistent negative thoughts, cognitive distortions, um, Using art as self-therapy also helps us to um, gain a better sense of self and identity. It can help us to process grief and overcome trauma. It helps us to relieve stress, address burnout, and uh, contributes to self-care, and so on and so forth. So now specifically, when we talk about using art as self-therapy, we would of course ask ourselves, what then is so therapeutic about art and art making such that we can use it as self-therapy, right? Now in this little um, diagram here or this chart that you see, it shows you the different levels of uh, engagement which are activated when we engage in the process of art making. Right? whether it's uh, the process of drawing, doodling, or painting, okay? so on and so forth. So at the lowest level, and by no means does it mean that it is the least important, it's just that this is the most, uh, it's just the way this chart is, is uh, uh, drawn. At the lowest level, when we say that um, the kinesthetic components is activated, 
in the process of art making. Kinesthetic here means the movement of the body. It could be when you're moving your arms, your limbs, certain parts of your body in the art making. This helps to release um, a lot of um, stress and physical tension, which may be held in the body, in the muscles, right? Art making also engages the sensory level, uh, sensory component. That means our sense organs of hearing, touch, sight, even smell. Um, and these help to bring us back into a different um, relationship with our body. It helps us to um, become more aware of our bodily sensations. At the perceptual uh, level, the ability to start creating forms, right, to and, and perspectives to communicate ideas to communicate objects or um, notions itself helps us to begin to frame what may be giving us difficulty and helps us to um, be able to address and understand um, issues that we may be grappling with. Art making also engages us at the affective level, meaning that it helps us to get in touch with certain emotions. Um, and it opens up, right, the experiencing of different human emotions. This is especially helpful um, for people who may be experiencing masking or numbing due to whatever difficulties they may be experiencing. So the process of art making can actually unlock um, the, this, this uh, issue that the person may be experiencing. So Art making also engages us at the cognitive uh, level, which is the ability to uh, process information, to problem solve, right? To synthesize uh, uh, external inputs, right? And um, to begin to gain deeper awareness and understanding of the issue at hand and of oneself. And at the symbolic level as well, um, in art making, and I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Carl Jung and the use of symbols and metaphors, oftentimes um, ex certain experiences can be very difficult to express verbally. So the, the careful use and choice of symbols and metaphors is a way of communicating these difficult experiences. And when we when we're able to communicate it, that means we're able to externalize it. When we're able to externalize it, we can then take a step back to look at it in order, in order to gain a deeper understanding. And the whole process of art making also involves the creative side, right? When we create something, that means we are essentially um, restoring or rebuilding the narrative uh, and the trajectory uh, of our lives, right? How we want this issue to be resolved, how we want to see the days ahead. So matching the different levels of engagement which are activated through the process of art making to what it means actually, um, you know, the actual manifestation, the actual experiencing, during uh, art making itself. So at the kinesthetic and the sensorial level, art making can provide a useful means of distraction because sometimes um, distraction is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we need to distract ourselves from um, pain that might be too, too hard to bear or we need to distract ourselves from thoughts which are going in, in a loop, right? Um, art making also provides a way of self-soothing in order to bring us back down from agitated states to a state of calmness. It is only when you're able to bring yourself from an agitated state down to a state of calmness that you're able then to have clarity in order to undertake the task of self-therapy. In addition, art making also provides us with an experience of engagement and sense of flow. 
and as mentioned earlier, it opens up, um, opens up us to the experience of positive emotions. Um, it could be that of excitement. It could be that of joy. It could be that of a sense of confidence and mastery uh, and sense of achievement, especially when uh, one has uh, managed to produce a piece which is either aesthetically pleasing or one which uh, one feels is mm, the art piece feels true, it feels real. That is when we feel that we feel better about ourselves because then we are able to communicate what is happening uh, inside. And ultimately, uh, art as self-therapy can also lead us to um, gaining deeper insights, gaining different perspectives, and also meaning making of our experiences. So next, we're just going to look at uh, important elements in art and art making. And I hope that, uh, you know, as I'm going along in these slides, uh, you're still working on your, your little artwork now, uh, whether you're, you're doodling or sketching or, or drawing or whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, and, and see, be open to whatever impressions and thoughts and emotions arise as we go along in this talk. So elements in art and art making, um, I mentioned earlier, metaphors and symbols. When we look at using art as self-therapy, metaphors and symbols and imagery are very important. As mentioned earlier as well, some experiences may be very difficult to communicate uh, verbally or using words. Therefore, we use shapes, we use objects in order to communicate what the experience means. So you, um, you see here in this slide, different um, images, different objects, it could be spheres, it could be that of an, um, this picture here is of an angel, a stone angel, and then the center picture is of three flowers. Now, Different things would mean uh, different things to different people, right? Different interpretations. And, and it's because all of us come from different uh, belief system, values, life experiences as well. So for instance, if you look at the picture of a stone, the stone angel here, for some people, they may say, oh, this picture looks like a picture of calmness. It is very calm, can be soothing. But for someone else with different uh, life experiences, different exposures, the person can well say, oh, this stone angel with, with a hazy back, background actually looks somewhat threatening, it may even look a bit scary or creepy. So the important thing is when we're using art as self-therapy, it doesn't matter what other people think. What is important is what these metaphors and the symbols mean to you personally. We also focus on expression, especially self-expression and not necessarily the aesthetics. That means when we are using art as self-therapy, we are not necessarily concerned about creating pretty or beautiful pieces of art because after all, we're not primarily concerned with uh, producing things for display or performance, but it is for our own self-therapy, right? We're work, working through uh, deep issues within ourselves. So the picture here you see of the boy who is merrily using the roller to apply, uh, you know, all sorts of colors and paint on the guitar. Um, one would say, what's happening here? You know, is this an art piece? Is this art? But the important thing is maybe he's, he's just expressing himself. Yeah, it's not for anyone else to judge. It is for our own self-therapy. So expression and not aesthetics. Remember the uh, earlier diagram about the sensorial uh, component, which is activated in the process of art making. So an element, an important element in art making is the sensorial aspect, right? So whether it's the tactile, the feelings, 
whether it's the smells, depending on the kind of uh, materials that you're using, they may have different smells. Um, it could be even the sounds. So the picture here you see of all this crumpled paper, um, depending on like the, even the thickness um, and the type of paper that you're using and the size, even the crumpling of paper, the squashing, tearing, folding, um, that produces different sounds, right? So when we are able to engage our uh, sense organs in the art of, uh, in the process of making art, that is where we become more mindful and more engaged in the whole process, right? And um, it's, it's moving from just purely cognitive to engaging the whole body as well in the art making. There is a very important place and role for mess and mess making in art and art making as self-therapy. So I think um, for many of us, we have been brought up um, and socialized such that we, we are often intimidated by mess. We are scared of making a mess. We want to be neat, we want to be tidy. But oftentimes when we're talking about cell therapy, what's going on inside sometimes is a very chaotic and disorganized state of things. So in the process of the art making, if the art itself is messy, that's perfectly fine too, because it may very well be a reflection of the mess and the chaotic state inside us, right? And the important thing is being able to communicate and reflect this externally. So don't be afraid of uh, making mess and uh, messes. Okay, so another important element in art making as self-therapy is making conscious the unconscious. What do we mean by this? Now, just looking at the two pictures here, which one do you think makes conscious the unconscious? Right? Just give you a few seconds. So the picture on the left depicts what looks like a figure that seems to be climbing onward and upward uh, some stone steps, right? And then there's something like a, the moon or uh, 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 the sun that's shining. And then the picture on your right is that of a mask. That's, uh, well, when we look at it, it's, it looks very raw, right? It doesn't look exactly very pretty or aesthetically pleasing. But I would say that the picture of the mask is an art piece that makes conscious the unconscious. That means it is able to surface what the maker or the artist himself may not have been aware of, right? What was happening inside. So this is what it means when we say making conscious the unconscious. Sometimes in our art making, we, when we approach it, we may not have any fixed picture, template, or design in mind. But as we go along and as, as we create that art piece, and after the art making, we take a step back and we look at it and we realize that what we have created is actually a reflection of what was going on inside all along. It's something that we were not aware of and we became aware of it only because we have created this art piece. Um, another important element in art making is the idea of embodiment and containment. Here are some pictures of art pieces which communicate how the art piece itself and the art making becomes a way of containing difficult um, experiences or strong emotions which, are, um, which have been discharged in the art making process, right? Remember I said, it's not about uh, expression or aesthetics, 
So it's not about creating pretty things, but it's about creating an art piece. And in the process, that art piece itself becomes a containment or a container for those difficult emotions that you need to process, right? Or those difficult experiences that you've not been able to vocalize or verbalize or share with anyone, right? So this is how art can be so useful for our own self-therapy. And of course, one should approach the whole um, process of art making with mindfulness, introspection, and reflection, right? To, do, to make art reflexively and reflectively as well, to be able to reflect upon the whole process, upon the whole experience. And it's true that, that we are able to begin to gain uh, self-awareness. This often happens uh, when we take, um, when after we have created the art piece, then you literally take a few paces back to view what you have created. And then in the quietness and the quiet reflection, certain insights may come to you. Okay, so having looked at um, elements in art making, how then do we proceed in art making or using art for our own self-therapy? So firstly, uh, if you've not already heard this somehow in my earlier slides, the important thing is to drop the labels, to drop all the preconceived notions of how one should approach art and art making, all the shoots, the musts, the arts, and unfortunately for some of us, the, the um, less positive experiences that we had from uh, art lessons in school, right? So there is no right way to draw something. There is no wrong way <clears throat> to draw something, right? So how you want to color the um, things, you want to color within the lines, outside the lines, you don't want to use lines. How um, do you want to uh, mix the colors and so on and so forth, right? We, are, we should not be limited or constrained by past negative experiences in art making, but the important thing is just to be free to explore. Right? And you, you will see this, uh, I will continue to emphasize this uh, in the slides, the coming slides as well. It's also important to go with the flow. So sometimes you might for no, you may not be able to understand yourself or even see the reason why you want to keep creating certain shapes, for instance, but go with the flow, right? The important thing is learn to be true to the inner voice, to listen to the inner voice and just go according to the flow. And if it means to a, a repetition of certain shapes, just do it, that's fine. Until such time that you feel that you want to change, you want to create a different shape, for instance, right? And so go with the flow. The same thing goes for um, the choice of colors, right? Sometimes we may not know or understand why we've chosen a certain color at that point in time of our art making, but that's fine as well. Just go with the flow. The important thing, as I keep mentioning, is that learn to listen to yourself. After all, this is about your own self-therapy, right? So there is the inner guide within you that says, okay, use this color or use another color. And sometimes the colors represent different emotions, different ideas as well. Again, it's about experimentation. It's about approaching the art making with curiosity and openness uh, and a sense of play, right? And uh, through that, you may even begin to experience positive emotions of uh, joy even, right? Of uh, surprises. These um, two pictures here are examples of how in the art making, um, I approach it without any particular design, template or image in mind, but how as the art making progressed, um, just images started to appear. For instance, 
the picture on your right. This was created um, again with no particular template or design in mind, but through the application uh, of many, many layers of colors. It was only after the piece was completed and I took a few steps back and looked at it that it struck me that it looked like two figures walking in tandem somehow, right? And that was when I took a, a black uh, crayon or pastel and, and just very quickly drew the outlines of the heads and the arms just so that I could delineate two figures even more clearly. Um, and this was a, um, an interesting and surprising development because uh, that somehow this art piece emerged, right? The picture of two figures walking along. It was a very interesting uh, development. The picture on your left um, was created um, using um, color pencils, right? Essentially, it was uh, many spheres, right? And then after I had finished creating the spheres, there was a lot of white spaces left between, in between the, the circles or the spheres. And then I just felt intuitively that I wanted to splatter acrylic paint over the art piece. And um, so I went with that. I went along and splattered uh, gray paint all over the piece. And it created a bit of mess, but that's fine. I cleaned it up after that. And um, what was interesting was after I finished splattering, I discovered that the splatter effect was essentially many, many tiny little spheres, right? Filling up not just the white spaces, but the entire art piece. And so this piece became almost like a theme on spheres and circles, big spheres created uh, with color pencils and the tiny little spheres created by splattering uh, acrylic paint. And again, this was a very interesting development, I thought, right? So approaching art making with a sense of curiosity and openness and uh, being able to sit with the uncertainty of what may develop and arise. Now, in using art as self-therapy, it is important to be patient with ourselves and with the process. So the emphasis should be on allowing the process to take place and not necessarily on the outcome or the product that is produced. So this art piece here was um, created over 13, 14 weeks. And there were many materials used in this art piece, acrylic, uh, paint, beads, uh, dried flowers, gravel, uh, dried leaves and pots in some form, and so on and so forth. And so, and parts of the, the picture was created uh, in parts and over many layers as well. So in, when we're using art for our own self-therapy, the experience of slowly creating an art piece mirrors the experience of our own self-therapy, where we learn to be patient with ourselves, whether it's for healing or for recovery. Things often need time, right? So we need to give ourselves time to heal, to recover, and not to be in a hurry to rush the process. So next, we're just going to look at um, very quickly art materials and some um, art making activities. So this is um, not an exhaustive list of art materials, but it's just for those of us who are new to this whole area, this might be something that uh, you, know, you can consider if you, you want to pick up using art as self-therapy. So for beginners, coloring is something that's very safe, maybe more familiar, and it gives you a sense of control, especially if you're using um, things like color pencils or markers, where the nib is small and fine. 
So the, the smaller and finer the nib, the more control you have over your own uh, art making, right? And so for those of us who are new, you want to exercise some control first, um, and that's fine. There are plenty of um, coloring books out there. Just the repetition, right, of coloring, the repetitive movements of uh, um, creating those colors can be very soothing. And when you have completed the picture, when you view it and you're pleased with what you have created, that itself can give rise to positive emotions of achievement and confidence. For those of us who want to go with the flow a bit more, you can doodle. And maybe for some of you, you may already be doodling right now, even during this talk. So doodles are basically your free, free flow, free form, uh, free association, going with the flow. Um, but you can also be precise even in your doodles. You can use uh, you know, rulers and other things to measure. You want to create a geometric shape, so on and so forth. So doodling is another activity that one can undertake in art and self-therapy. Zentangle, again, um, it's about filling in certain shapes or spaces with um, repetition of shapes. And the whole um, process of creating a zentangle it's very good for calming agitated states of mind, right? For anxiety, for um, distraction. Again, through the repetitive movement and it's usually very focused, um, small concentrated shapes that helps us to distract ourselves from um, agitated uh, or dist um, emotions or states of distress. It brings us back into a sense of calmness. Endless possibilities uh, with paper and paper products. So paper, as you've seen earlier in the slide, you can crush it, you can tear it, you want to paste it, you hang it, you can create collages or even installations with paper. And you can uh, reuse and recycle paper. For those of us who enjoy time outside in nature uh, with um, green spaces and natural lighting, and if it's safe to do so, you can even um, use objects that you find in nature to create your own art pieces. Mandalas are basically uh, forms that usually start with um, from the center and then through the repetition of different shapes, it grows and grows and grows. It can be as big or as small as you wish for it. Oftentimes people find that um, the creation of mandalas is something that is very good for uh, working through um, spiritual or even existential issues. The picture that you see here in the center is essentially a, a mandala that is created from objects found in nature. Rupee flowers, cotton flowers, saga seeds, so on and so forth. Okay. So you can create mandalas using your watercolor, color pencils, and uh, so on and so forth, right? Different art materials. For those of us who prefer a more tactile approach to art making, you can use clay uh, or kinetic sand or super dough, right? Clay tends to be wet. It may have certain smell, which uh, certain people may not be comfortable with. So be open and play around, explore uh, what kind of materials that you're most comfortable with. That's the most important thing because this is about your own self-therapy. So do what feels right, do what feels comfortable for you. Fabric is another example. Uh, you can use fabric scraps or you can buy, uh, you can embroider, you can cut, you can paste. Um, 
and there's so much, right? Endless possibilities if this is something that you want to work with. A break. And then there is mixed media where you don't necessarily have to confine yourself to just one type of art material, uh, one medium, but you can use different types. Again, we go back to what is the definition of art, right? Is it something that has to be aesthetically pleasing or is it can be expanded to a broader understanding that art is creative self-expression? And in this case, if we're using art for our own self-therapy, that creative self-expression is something that uh, holds meaning only to us, the maker, the artist. And um, for those of us who are so inclined, you can use digital art. These two pictures are actually helpfully contributed by my son. And uh, Digital art and the different uh, software and the apps are very, um, very convenient because they provide you with easy templates uh, as to the kind of shapes that you want to use, the uh, color schemes, and so on and so forth, right? And even in the creation of uh, animation, for instance, different clips and all that, this is a way literally of um, almost uh, restoring, if you like, Right? A way of uh, processing certain anxieties or processing fears or restoring uh, certain trajectories of your experiences. Okay, So those are just some examples of uh, art materials. They're by no means exhaustive. Next, we're just going to very quickly look at some activities that we can consider in using art as self-therapy. So in addition to our own art making, um, we can also view other people's artworks or art pieces for our own self-therapy. So whether it's going to a museum or going outdoors, exhibitions of uh, artworks, so and so forth, the important thing is approaching it with mindfulness, with openness, and yet at the same time, um, introspection so that you remain open to what uh, messages, for instance, right? You feel that the art piece may be communicating to you specifically in the context of uh, your presenting issue, the difficulty that you are experiencing at that point in time. Okay. So the one canvas process painting, uh, this is essentially um, about working on one piece of artwork, but over many, many sessions. So this is similar to the earlier piece that I talked about where we emphasize the process and not, oops, sorry. We emphasize the process and not the product. So this is another example that was created over 13, 14 weeks as well. Um, the one canvas process painting or the idea of working on one piece over many, many sessions is especially useful um, for those of us who have difficulty with boundaries, with pacing ourselves. Sometimes we, we tend to uh, bite off more than we can chew. We, we take on too much, uh, more than we can handle. And therefore, the art making of pacing ourselves and taking our time to, to be intentional in creating things, teaches us boundaries, teaches us how to pace ourselves, right? So as not to burn out. So response art is another way of using art as self-therapy. So it's called response art essentially um, because we use uh, the art making as a way of responding to certain external um, events, external triggers, which um, can cause us to feel very strong, powerful emotions, which we find hard to process, we find hard to verbalize or communicate or tell others about it. So for instance, like uh, if you, you watch the, you see a lot of uh, media content um, on the Ukrainian war and 
perhaps mm, the pictures are upsetting, it causes you to feel certain things, but you cannot verbalize, right? So what we do is we, we create art, right? We create art to communicate feeling states, what we're feeling at that point in time. And that's why it's called response art. It is art in response to external triggers. Visual journaling, in a sense, is quite similar to response art, but visual journaling is more like your, your um, journaling or your diary entries, right? So you can do it at, say, at the end of the, the day, at night before you, you sleep. Some people approach it as a, a mind dump, as it were. So it's a way of, again, processing all that has happened in the day uh, or mm, certain difficult thoughts, uh, difficult emotions, certain difficult states that you experience. And you can, of course, use words if you want to incorporate uh, writing, right? And if you just want to just uh, limit it to just visuals, that's perfectly fine as well. The important thing is, is your own self-therapy. So there's no right, no wrong. There's no one fixed way of approaching it. All right. So, okay. So I like to end my talk with a caveat that there is a place and a role for professional help. So while it's fine to use art for our own self-therapy, at any point in time, if you find that you're getting more and more stuck or losing control, or you don't think you're getting any better, or your loved ones, people who care about you tell you that uh, you, you probably need professional help, please get help then it is okay to actually seek professional help. In fact, you should seek professional help to help you through those issues. Now, what you can do in tandem with seeking professional treatment, you can very well continue with art for your own self-therapy as well, in tandem, right? And if you so happen to be seeing an art therapist, right, as the professional help, that you're seeking, then what you can do is you can even bring your art making experiences and even your art piece into your sessions to process it together with your art therapist, because your art therapist is a person who is trained to be able to help you uh, process these difficult emotions, to be able to help you um, use art and your creative expressions, right, for your therapy as well. I've come to the end of my talk. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have uh, what you have in your hand now, what you have created, your visual notes. Uh, that would be something that would capture the past one hour of your time um, together with me. Right? I'm happy to take uh, questions now. Thank you.